Welcome ladies. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Good morning, good morning, good rising to you. I put this um, this video together just to describe our coming class that we're going to be offering in the Angry Divas Soul Growth section of our website and our work that we do. And it was inspired by a post that I wrote um, just last night actually. And I've edited it and put it on the blog and all that. And I will be sending it to you all with the newsletter um, which I am going to bump up instead of it just being weekly. And I know I said yesterday I was probably going to dial it back. I actually went into meditation and I thought about it. And when I came back, I said, no, what we need to do is a daily thing. I need to daily be connecting with, you know, the sisters who have signed on for our newsletter, who have signed up and who are looking for something a little bit more than what I put on the Facebook page. So, I want to share something with you all, and I think it's something that you can relate to, and it's early, and this is my first conversation of the day, so excuse the frog in my voice, but um, let me take a sip of my coffee. I want to share something with you ladies. The feminine is the aspect that was the hardest for me. And it's not that it's hard for me to engage or act. It's that it's hard for me to share with other people. What that means is I have a I have a difficult time sometimes with just letting my feminine flow. I'm very defensive and def- and greatly a defender of my own feminine. And I learned very early on that I had to be, and that's not wrong. That is not wrong. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You should be protecting your feminine. This is a lesson that should be taught to us and told to us and encouraged in us, but it's not. So I had to learn very early on to protect my feminine. And I learned many, many lessons in that. But one of the ways that I developed protecting my feminine was to hide it. And the reason that I did that is You know, when I was nine years old is when my breast grew in, when my breast began growing. And by the time I was, and so in nine nine years old, I was in third grade. And, you know, I was a late born. And by the time that, you know, I was in fifth grade, I had become titties. I had big titties. And, you know, boys are boys. And they're encouraged to be. And no one defends the feminine and this is a lesson that is taught to little girls very early on just ignore him just tell him no tell him stop but nobody stands up for the feminine for your right to exist in your body and so what I began doing is you know I dress so cute mother made sure that she had us on and she wasn't always on one so when I got a little bit more of a you know, I could pick my own clothes out. I was always cute, you know. I had an affinity for ruffle shirts at the time, in elementary school especially. And leotards were all the rage. <laughs> and so, you know, I would do my little thing. But I had this purple hoodie that was big and kind of, you know, frumpy, even for a, an elementary school kid. And I would always put it on and I'd keep it on all day, no matter what I wore under it. And so it always just looked like I had on pants and a hoodie. And I remember one day in computer class, who remembers, no, I ain't even gonna be ashamed, but who remembers Oregon Trail back in the day? (laughs) So we're in computer class and we're all getting ready to take to the computers and to, you know, engage in this game, Oregon Trail. And a group of the girls come up to me and they're like, oh my God, you're always wearing you know, these clothes, you you always got this sweater on. What do you have on under this sweater? And so they surround me in a circle. And one girl is bold enough to step up and she unzips the sweater. And I mean, I'm trying to stop her and I'm really nervous, you know, because I was a shy kid. Nobody believes that about me, but I am a shy person. Um, don't let the talking fool you. I am a shy person. I am I'm an introvert and I am very reserved. Like I say all the time, Angry Divas is a show and it's a character. But to my core, Cree, the woman, me, I am shy, I am reserved, 
I'm more um, introverted. I love to think and to write, you know, quiet activities. It's just, just part of my nature. Anyway, so she stepped forward and she unzips the hoodie. And I'm horrified because I don't know what they're going to say. And like, are they going to make fun of my shirt? That was the day I had on that. It was a beautiful ivory colored ruffle shirt. It was a nice chamoose material. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Anyway, she unzips the thing and she goes, oh my God, you look so cute. Why are you always wearing this sweater? And I started crying and they were like, oh, Cree, it's all right. You know, so this is around me and you know, they're wiping my tears. And I say to them, the boys, it's the boys. They're always snapping my bra. They're always grabbing my boobs. It's the boys. I don't want them to touch me. And so we began talking about my posture. Because, you know, I would sit. This is, I was quite young. I stopped this shit right after we had this conversation. But I would sit and I would kind of arch my shoulders forward. Kind of like almost if I can close my shoulders around my titties. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no hiding them things, girl. But I didn't have that confidence then. You know, I was young and it was scary going into being a woman at nine years old. It was scary watching my body change and seeing the way that boys and grown ass nasty men would react to my form. And all I knew to do was to defend myself and to make myself smaller and smaller and smaller. And so those girls that day. They liberated me. They helped me to really step in. I mean, you're talking about a 10-year-old, you know. They helped me to step into my confidence and my femininity in a way that I did not even realize they were at the time. But it was it was like an um, initiation. That's why I'm kind of happy with the outfit I had on, considering I had on a variation of white that day. And it definitely was an initiation where I was unzipped and... It was women, it was, you know, I, mean, I say women, but we were girls, you know, but it was the feminine. It was my fellow sister who helped me to unzip that covering, to access those parts of myself that I had hidden away, that I had begun to disbelieve in and not want to associate with and blah, 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 blah. And I'm so thankful. I'm so eternally thankful for what they did and for that lesson, that memory. And even though, you know, shit wasn't perfect, don't get me wrong, I have had some near misses or hits and stuff, it's always been a male who has attacked my feminine, and my reaction had been to make myself small. But it was always another woman who came along and helped me to unzip that covering so I could stand in my feminine glory and realize that it is power, it is a strength. It is okay to be sensitive. I'm very sensitive. I'm, I'm a little too sensitive. I'm, I'm a very, very sensitive person. And I'm highly sensitive. HSP, they call it. And Claire Empathic. And those of us who have anxieties in public, we are very empathic. That's why we have those anxieties, because we have the ability to tap into so many different aspects of the soul of the people around us of what they're going through. You can feel and hear and see all their shit. All the shit they dressed up and put makeup on and their favorite dress on and their best coat. You can see all that lies beneath and feel it. You feel that vibration. You're very in tune to that vibration. And it's overwhelming. And so we do make ourselves small. And we live in a world that does not honor the feminine. Oh, we want to have access to the feminine. They want the pussy. They want the womb. They want her to cook and clean and submit and make him feel good. We want each other to build ourselves up. We want our sisters to encourage us. We want our sisters to speak a word that's going to help us transform our lives, but we don't want to give it back. We also are blasphemous against the feminine. And in this course, we're going to go over ways that we can stop that. Come together with us in our Angry Divas Soul Growth. Seven days of revitalizing the feminine frequency. Seven days of revitalizing the feminine 
frequency. Sisters who have taken classes with me in the past, you know and this is going to be a live class. I will also record it so those who are not available will also be able to get the recording and if you, you know, don't have the fee for it for now, I will also, um, you know, be making it available for later and I have three scholarship slots available. I am going to quote this class and the reason I'm going to quote this class is I find that it's better when we have smaller groups and so it's first come first serve, it's a quoted and I have three scholarship slots available for sisters who aren't able to, you know, afford the fee. But before we get into all of that, I want to talk about, you know, these seven days seven days of revitalizing the feminine we're going to be talking about mantras personal power the yoni the womb how what the feminine is different feminine aspects and attributes defining the feminine for ourselves realizing why we threw away the feminine because someone else defined it for us and we did not want to wear their definition so we threw it away we threw the baby out with the bathwater. how do we get it back seven days of revitalizing the feminine frequency. The divine feminine returns. Thank you for watching and listening. Be ever wonderful in your own sweet way. Sign up, invest in yourself, baby. You're worth it.